The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is the shade upon my right hand. The sun will not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. For the Lord shall preserve me from all evil. He shall, he shall preserve my soul. He shall preserve my going out and my coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I want to, to warn you, to caution you, to close your ears to motivational speaking and syrupy, be happy, cotton candy kind of preaching. Because in order to get where Paul is in this passage, he uses a word that is hard for us to grasp. He says, I've been instructed. That word instructed means I've gone through an initiation. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not at this place by happenstance. I haven't come to this attitude because I've lived a long time. But Paul says, I've gone through enough. I've been initiated to the point where whatever happens, I'm going to be all right. It's an initiation. Everybody here who has pledged a fraternity or a sorority, you know and recognize your sorority sister or your fraternity brother wherever you meet them. Y'all got a secret handshake or some sound you make or some, some initiation rite that you recognize each other and once a delta, always a delta. Once an AKA, always an AKA. Once a Q, always a Q. Because you've gone through hell week. You've gone through initiation rites. And because you have come through the rite of passage, you know each other intimately. Uh, Paul, uh, who has been imprisoned, his needs have been met through the church by Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus has brought Paul a love gift. <clears throat> and it has been 10 years since they have heard from Paul. But Paul is still suffering for the cause of the gospel. And Paul is not discouraged. Uh, Paul is not languishing in despair. Paul is not giving up. He, he is rejoicing in the Lord. As a matter of fact, he writes to them, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say, rejoice. He says to them, be careful or be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God I wish I had a witness. 
which surpasseth all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Paul is headed towards the back stretch. Uh, the finish line is now in view. And he says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think of his goodness towards you. Think of how he kept you in your situation. Think of how he brought you out. Think of his deliverance towards you. Think of his faithfulness. Think of his sufficiency. Think of his wisdom and his goodness. Everything that is good and perfect comes from above. From the father of lights in whom there is no shadow of turning. This abundance of which I speak is not name it and claim it. There's a secret uh, that Paul wants to initiate us into. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of a, a, a Greek a kind of slant on what Paul is writing to these believers because the Stoics believed that there was some esoteric knowledge that they had that separated them from others. But Paul wants the believer to understand that there is a secret to abundance. There's a pathway that only the initiated can find. Let me run that by you one more time. Not everybody who goes to church finds this path. Uh, not, not everybody who has a Bible finds this path. Only the initiated find the path to abundance. Here is how you get that. Paul said you got to rejoice in your substance. Rejoice in your substance. Uh, be thankful for what you have. You, you, you will hardly find anybody who is content. We, we read it, we say it, we shout over it, but who wouldn't want some more money. I wish I had four or five more honest believers here. Who, who would not be content losing 20 pounds? You, you could get in all that stuff you say you're going to get in. Talk back to me if you can. Who would not like to be 25 years old? I wish I had a witness here. Now to all of you dishonest people in this audience today, let me talk to some real folk in here. If I had the sense at 25 that I have right now, I wouldn't mind being 25 years old. All the mistakes I've made, if I could go back and live my life over again, I would love to have that opportunity, but yesterday is gone. We're not content with our size. We're not content with our age. We're not content with our educational level. We're not content with our car our house, our children, our husband, 
our grandchildren, our neighbor, our cousin, our first cousin. There's always something to gripe about. But Paul says, in order to get your hands around what God has, you have to learn how to rejoice where God put you. What you have comes from God's hand. Have I got a witness? <laughs> it might not be what somebody else has, but God trusted you with what you have. And since God trusted you with what you have, rejoice in it. Oh, it's, it's not what the neighbor has down the street, but I thank God for what I have. Have I got a witness here? It, it's not what my neighbor has in the pew with me, but I thank God for what I have. Because what I have, the substance I have, God gave it to me. And brothers and sisters, I don't ever want God to think for a moment that I'm not satisfied with what he gave me. So I've learned to rejoice if I got $2 or $200. Ever got a witness here? <laughs> I've learned to rejoice if I'm in a Mercedes or if I'm riding on the metro train. Listen, I was praising God before I got to Houston. I was praising God before I live in the house that I live in now. I was praising God before I'm blessed as I am blessed right now. Because if God sees you satisfied with what you have, he'll give you more. Is there anybody else here thankful for what you have? Blessing God's name for I will bless the Lord at all times. Rejoice in your substance. Stop crying about what you don't have. And thank God for what you have left. God could have took it all. You complain about your house while people are homeless. You complain about your children instead of thanking God he let them live this long. You complain about your health when it could be so much worse. You complain about your car when some people have never even seen an automobile. God's been good to us. God has blessed us with substance. Come on, talk back to me here. God has blessed us with things, material possessions that we will never use all God has given us. Rejoice in your substance. And then Paul says, to find this path to abundance, you've got to learn how to rest in your situation. Rejoice in your substance. And then learn how to rest in your situation. He says, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished, where you also you were careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. That word, I have learned. Uh, means that I did not have knowledge previously. I had to learn to stop complaining. In whatsoever state I am, I've learned to be content. Now, contentment is not Self-satisfaction. 
Contentment is not self-satisfaction. Because once you are satisfied with yourself, you put God aside. I wish I had my 730 cry. Once you're satisfied with yourself, you stop praying. You stop giving God your best. Why be satisfied with C's when you can make A's? Why be satisfied with a little when God wants to bless you with much? Self-satisfaction makes you, makes you settle for the good when God wants to give you the great. And who would not in their right mind want the great over the good? But when you become self-satisfied, you block yourself from blessings. Uh, self-satisfied people sit in church and never open their mouth. Yeah, there's some self-satisfied folk looking at me right now. God's been good to you since 730. And you haven't clapped your hands. You haven't opened your mouth. <laughs> you haven't given God any praise. Because you're satisfied with your job. You're satisfied with your house. You're satisfied with yourself. But by 12 o'clock today, all of that stuff can be taken away from you. And if, you, if, if your stuff is all you have, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, God can take all of this stuff and I will still praise his name. Job says, though he slay me, yet will I put my trust in him. All the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. Resting in your situation is not self-satisfaction, nor is it self-sufficiency. I don't have everything I need. I'm not talking now about material things. Because I'm satisfied in how God is blessing me materially. Because if God doesn't do anything else, uh, he's already done more than enough. But, but I need more grace. Uh, I need more faith. I need more power in prayer. I need more in my relationship with God. I need to dig deeper in my fellowship with my brothers and sisters. I'm, I'm not all I ought to be in terms of a brother in Christ to somebody who needs my fellowship. Uh, don't get quiet on me here. Uh, we need one another. And listen, that is risky. Because whenever you open yourself to others, you run the risk of being lied on, of being misunderstood, of being rejected. Come on, help me preach if you can. Of being talked about. <laughs> but you're not doing it for them. Come on, help me preach a minute. When I ask God for more, that means I have to put out more. If I want more grace, I've got to show more grace towards others. If I want more forgiveness, I've got to show more forgiveness towards others. If I want more love, I've got to be more loving towards others. Because what God sends you he wants you to send out. Because God does not want us to be a reservoir of blessings. He wants us to be a channel of blessings. Because when water comes to a reservoir, it stops. But it goes through a channel. And God will not send blessings to you 
until you let him send blessings through you. Resting in your situation is not self-satisfaction. It's not self-sufficiency. But it is self-surrender. I surrender. I surrender. You caught me. I surrender. I said I wasn't going to do it no more. I surrender. I lied, but I surrender. I cheated, but I surrender. I give up. I'm tired fighting. I can't run anymore. I can't get away from your burning eyesight. You catch me every time. Yeah. When, um, when my daughter was going to elementary school, uh, she would get a bad grade and hide it in the same hiding place every time. And I said to her, you, you need to give up your life of crime. You are not a good thief. You're not a good liar. You're not a good murderer. Because I can find you out every time. Because you ain't got sense enough to hide it in a different place. You put it in the same place every time. I go get it. Whip you every time. Give up your life of crime. Now let's lift that up to where God is. Where can I go? from your spirit where can I flee from his presence if I make my bed in hell he's there if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the earth he's there God sees everything so I surrender And listen, self-surrender is not the same as self-pity. I surrender because I lean on somebody who's stronger than I am. I rely on somebody who's bigger than I am. God has all power. And so... Paul says, I know how to be a base, and I know how to abound. I know how to act when I'm up. I know how to behave when I'm down. I know how to praise God when I got a plenty. And I know how to praise God when I'm down to my last dime. <laughs> because my current situation does not determine my future praise. I wish I had my 730 crowd. I'm just determined. I'm just foolish enough to praise God no matter what because God is always on my side. Have I got a witness here? You, you, can, you can almost tell when some folk are having it rough. Either they don't come to church or when they do come to church they are sour and, and down and rough looking. Come on, help me here. But, but when you got a track record with God and when you've been initiated you got it like they don't even know when you heard it. They, they don't know when you broke. They don't know when you're feeling bad. They don't know when you don't have anything. Because you're so happy you look like. I wish I had somebody to help me. <laughs> you, you look like you're doing well. You look like you're feeling all right. Because you've learned 
that just because it's this way today, if you stay with God, he'll turn it around tomorrow. Anybody here ever had God turn it around in your life? God will fix it for you if you stay with him. Mm. Now listen. Rejoice in your substance. Rest in your situation. And finally, realize your strength. Now I'm about to shout right now. <laughs> uh, I got a frog in my throat. Uh, and uh, two or three of my deacons advised me of how to get rid of this frog in my throat. Uh, two or three of my unredeemed deacons <laughs> tried to help me. <laughs> and I told him I can't do it now. <laughs> Got to wait till after church. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to go home and refresh myself. <laughs> but uh, help me, Holy Spirit. <laughs> uh, as I try to get this last little word out. Uh, Paul does not say, I can't. Because that would be pessimism. Paul does not say, I can. That would be presumption. So he says, I can do all things through Christ, which is power. Not pessimism. Not presumption, but power. Yeah. And the power comes not from what I can do, because from what I can do is limited. But what I can do through Christ is limitless. I wish I had somebody to help me. Thank you for tuning in to A Call to Joy. It is our prayer that the Word of God has brought joy, strength, and faith to your life. We would love to have you as our guest at Lily Grove Missionary Baptist Church, where we are exalting the Savior, equipping the saints, and evangelizing the sinner. For your convenience, we have a 7.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. worship service every Sunday morning and 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. Lily Grove is located at 7034 Till Wester Street, Houston, Texas, 77021, or feel free to visit our website at www. Dot lilygrove.org. Until next week, God has called us to a life of joy.